Welcome to this review of Mashal Magic and Muscle Chapter 79 Mash Bernadet and the School of Hard Knocks. The chapter starts off with an explanation of the fact that the three schools each had their own different disposition with Saint Ars which believed in justice and how rule breakers are punished severely, of course this based upon the society's idea of justice, so probably wouldn't have supported Mash's state of non-magic at the very beginning at least. Eastern is apparently all about humanity and compassion, which didn't really seem to be true within the first few chapters, what with the arrogance of the students and the teachers being all around us is so that doesn't seem to be the case, at least at first. And finally, there is walkies where power is everything, that's the most basis one and probably the only one that you can trust to actually live up to their school motto. We then get a breakdown on the number of divine visionaries which come from each school, 11 from Eastern, 4 from St. Ars and 85 from Walkies, not surprising that a position based on power, has people mainly produced from a school which prizes personal power. We then get back to where the previous chapter ended, with the announcer declaring that the representatives of St. Ars have dropped out and they had given their seats to the members of Walkies, of course Demina can't help but rub it in claiming that they were smart enough to realize they weren't fit enough to be visionaries, and then he calls forth three more people to join him, he then of course goes on to insult Easton, claiming that a school which puts the importance on character doesn't meet the requirements of being a divine visionary, obviously ignoring the fact that Wahlberg is the headmaster of Easton, had the strength to fight father and was a former divine visionary. Of course, he then insults St. Oz in a similar manner, this naturally causes quite an uproar in crowd observing them, with Dot even calling out how it went from a 3-on-3-on-3 three on three on three to a 6-on-3. And while Finn is once again in my option underestimating Mash's strength by believing he couldn't face them on his own, Mash is losing his mind as he tries to do simple math. Somehow ending up with 18 people, which leaves people even more confused by what is going on in his head. Mash just brushes it off, claiming that it doesn't matter because all he has to do is beat them, but Demina just proceeds to mock him, but Mash doesn't raise to the bait only saying that he would rather not fight at all but he needs to win for the sake of his father and his friends, Demina claims he can sympathize with him fighting for those important to him, not certain if I believe that. Demina then tells Mash it doesn't matter whatever he does anyway, because their positions were decided at birth, as he is the older brother and has magic, so Mash surpassing him isn't possible. Mash, despite everything he has learned is still confused about the remark regarding Demina being his sibling, requiring that Dot remain him all about the innocent zero connection, but him coming out and just saying it makes me wonder why no one is intervening and taking him for interrogation, what is everyone doing? But before anything can come from that King Russ arrives to tell everyone about what really happened, although he's still in pretty bad condition coughing up blood, we also learn that they cursed their families, forcing them to choose their families over their school pride, he apologizes to Mash for disgracing themselves. I'm more impressed that he is still alive after the beatdown we saw him getting before, I thought for certain he and his other friends would be dead by this point. But the members of Walkies aren't about to let him get away with saying that, with one of them who has strangely shark-like teeth claiming that they are dirty liars, coming to the ceremony and blabbering on about school pride and apologizing makes them look weak. And if you gave up because you wanted to save your family then you should just step down. Then something happens and King Russ has blood burst from his back just like when he was fighting against Demina. Mash, Lance and Dot prepare for a fight but instantly Lance and Dot are trapped in a swirling black mass separating them from Mash. A shark tooth person commands them to separate them one by one so that they could go on as rampage, he then sends forth a several black blades towards Mash, who doesn't seem to react as the attack comes down upon him. But the attack doesn't manage to land as it hits instead several giant doll heads which completely blocks the attack. And so behind Mash, three new people emerge to join him, to even out the odds, with Margaret, who had returned to his regular form rather than his more youthful form, of course Abel, the doll mage who saved Mash from the shark-toothed figure's attack and the one who spoke out against them and finally Abyss Razor, the man with the evil eye. 
I was wondering when we would get to see these guys again and I also had to wonder why no one brought up using the magic cancelling eye against father who obviously rely completely on magic, at this point I'm almost inclined to believe that if that was to happen when he was shifting if it would just kill him because the magic sustaining him would be turned off. Or at the very least it would leave him significantly weakened due to not having his magic available. Honestly just having Abyss Razor around would have made the whole fight against Innocent Zero way easier. And why is no one else getting involved when obviously they basically just announced what they had done and are now going straight after Mash and his friends? Does no one care? Or is there some sort of magic preventing them from intervening? I'm really confused by this. But anyway, I've been the anonymous weeb, this has been my review, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and make certain to have a good day or night wherever you are.